Hello, hello. Por mucho más caos. Uh, no, not too many people, uh, sorry, down there. <laughs> Sold out. Sold out, yeah. <laughs> right, I will just start. I don't think there, there will be more people coming today. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm Filippo. I'm a technical educator at uh, Web3 Foundation. And today we talk about uh, Web3 and Polkadot. It's very entry level. Some concepts maybe you already know. I will just iterate through them so that uh, we build a story. Um, right, so um, blockchain, right? What is blockchain? We hear that is uh, a distributed ledger, replicated state machine. This, uh, these are concepts that might sound a little bit unfamiliar or maybe complicated, but they're not. So bear with me. We just go through this slide very quickly. Blockchain, what it is. Blockchain is just a way of storing data and uh, data are stored into blocks. Blocks are produced by uh, authors, and authors are a subset of um, participants of the network. And participants of the network, hopefully they are scattered around the, the globe, and they're running a piece of, uh, they're called also nodes. They run a piece of software, and this piece of software, what it does is just take some uh, transactions that are happening, and they, in a specific time frame, and they are packing into blocks. They're very fine. The block is valid according to the logic of the chain, of that specific chain. And if it's valid, if it's okay, they come to a consensus all together and they attach the block on the chain. So decentralized, uh, more better like uh, distributed because we have different nodes distributed across the globe. Like you can see in the map there, the different points, these are different nodes. And um, it's important to also understand that uh, it's a blockchain is a state machine. What it means, it means that the blocks determine the state of the machine at a given time. So if you have like uh, uh, one block, and this is the last block of the chain, this is the last state. If you add a block, then we transition from one state to the other, and uh, this uh, state transition is possible because all these nodes together, they come to a consensus about uh, a specific uh, block. And if it's valid, this is like uh, added to the chain. So state machine, because we have this state uh, concept, a replicated state machine, replicated because copy of the same chain is uh, present in all the nodes that we have. So all the nodes across the globe, they have the same copy of this, uh, of this chain. And this brings the to the point that uh, if uh, we attack or switch off one node, it's not possible to stop the chain, right? Because you have many other nodes across the globe that have the same copy, and they will be able to come to a consensus. And this is basically an unstoppable system, of course, unless you own all the nodes. But uh, we make sure that this doesn't happen. And uh, yeah, so another property of the blockchain is that it's immutable. So data that are stored into blocks is not possible to go and change those data. Because if you do so, you will have to change all the story up to the latest block. It's a lot of work, a lot of money that you will need, especially in proof of stake uh, blockchain. So very important to understand that data in a blockchain is like set data in stone. We want to make sure that when the data are in the block, they are tamper resistant. Not tamper proof, tamper resistant. And um, another thing is that we now have a permissionless system. Typically, uh, blockchain are permissionless, which means that everybody can participate, can be a, a participant. Uh, we can be either a node or in proof of stake, a nominated proof of stake like Polkadot can be a nominator, for example. So we, we can actually participate to the system and it is decentralized. We already talked about it. Uh, trustless. Trustless is a big component. Trustless system, it means that we don't have to trust uh, a middleman or somebody else between uh, me and I want to send some uh, 
some tokens to Nachito and uh, there is nobody between us, right? I can send them to send the tokens, but between us there is only a bunch of nodes, a bunch of software that comes to a consensus and when the transaction is in the block, done. Nobody's there. So a really, really powerful system that allows to take out the human element that we now have in banking system and these kind of things. So this is basically important to understand what a blockchain is. And uh, also, since it's a way to store data, data stored into blocks. So really here, the block space, what we can store, how we can use the block. This is huge uh, importance for a blockchain uh, ecosystem. What, an, what a blockchain ecosystem does is basically um, providing block space. This is actually the value, one of the big value that a blockchain ecosystem uh, provides. And the blockchains has to be secure. Proof of stake blockchains basically need to have some financial security because then if you don't have financial securities, it's very easy to change the direction of the chain with just a little stake. So we need big financial security in order to provide secure block space. And then we also need the block space to be flexible because we need to store different type of data. We just don't want to store like uh, kitties, uh, NFTs, uh, CIDs and stuff like that. We just want really to use this block space for useful stuff, right? And uh, it must be available because what's the point to have block space is very, very expensive to get your hands on, right? Uh, developers must to be able to use it uh, all around the world um, in order to to make something useful on a, on, a, on a blockchain. So block space, really important. So we, we saw what the blockchain is, the importance of block space, the course functionalities of a blockchain since the, the, the birth uh, with Bitcoin in 2009. In a block, we store financial transaction mostly at the beginning. But then Ethereum came, 2015, now we can store financial transaction, NFTs, CIDs, uh, more stuff, smart contracts, big, big, big thing at the time and still today. Um, but then 2020 came Polkadot. And Polkadot, we, can, we cannot do smart contracts on Polkadot. Uh, we can do it on the parachain. But what Polkadot really does is that we can store state transition proofs of L1 chains. So wh what does it mean? Um, so here you can see uh, on, the, on this uh, corner a little bit how the architecture of Polkadot works. We have a relay chain is the ring. This is actually the Polkadot relay chain is the layer zero, which means that uh, it provides security. We will discuss it later on. But and all the other things that are attached, these are layer ones. These are real blockchains like like Bitcoin, like Ethereum, the one that you know nowadays, these are real blockchains. This is really important to understand. And what we can store on the relay chain blocks, these are transition proofs of those chains. We will came later on, this allows us to have shared security in, uh, in the system, which is a huge thing in a multi-chain in a, in a multi environment. And um, so we saw blockchain, block space, evolution of block space, but what, 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 why is it important in Web3? So let's, let's dive a little bit in. It's a very simple schematic about what, how Web2 works and how Web3 works. Web2 basically you have a front end that talks to a back end. And from the back end, basically you are uh, pushing, pulling data from a database. And this is nicely sitting in a server that is usually owned by the company that controls the front end, right? It can be Facebook, Uber, Airbnb call whatever uh, you want. Um, and Web3, it's a little bit different. It's not really that simplistic, but let's, let's say it's like this. You have a front end, and the front end is basically talking with the blockchain. So the blockchain really now is really important because, and the block space as well, because we have an internet that is talking to uh, the blockchain, and the blockchain is storing the data of, uh, of the user, right? So block space is really important here. And this actually allows us, if you remember the first slide, that the blockchain is permissionless, is trustless, is decentralized. This 
allows us to bring all these uh, features of uh, the blockchain, because we're using blockchain as a tool, to, have, to the web. Now we have decentralized app that are uh, very difficult to stop, and uh, they're permissionless, and, uh, and all these things, right? So this is really important to like build some context and, and understand what blockchain is and uh, why it's important for, for Web3. Because Web3 is the big umbrella, and blockchain is just a tool that allows us to achieve the Web3 goals, which is basically privacy-focused, uh, decentralized, unstoppable apps, uh, that allows us to, to gain back the, the power or the ownership, actually, that, uh, that we lost. Because with blockchain, we have the right to own, the right to own our data. Just more um, broad here, we see the evolution from Web 1 to Web 3. Web 1, maybe some of you remember, it's basically mostly read, reading content presented to you. Uh, these were mostly in the 90s, uh, available to the, to the public. Then we have Web 2, read and write. Now we have, uh, this is 2000, social media. We can, we can basically um, read content, write content, create content, all these things. Web 3, read, write, own. So we own our data. This is because of blockchain, because blockchain allows us to, to have the right to, to own this data. Why is that? because we have this really powerful um, tool that is cryptography. So as, as, as long as we have our keys, our cryptographic keys, we can verify that whatever we do, that what we sign, what, uh, the transaction that we send, the NFTs that we bought is ours. Because the blockchain is owned by nobody. It's, it's owned by the community, right? the community that participate to the, to the chain. So if we store data on the chain, the only way to access it is we have the keys. If we don't have the keys, the data are basically there, but uh, unaccessible. And maybe I hope some of you that they didn't experience these kind of things, but there are a lot of people that they lost control of their assets because either you own the thing or you don't. So that's, that's it. So what, what it is uh, blockchain, um, we saw it, uh, the block space, the evolution and everything. Um, what is Web3, right? What, what is the role of Polkadot in Web3? What brings and allows us to, to build like the vision of Web3? Polkadot brings mostly five things that uh, solve problems that there will be in the near future. One thing is application specific chain. Then we have shared security, secure interoperability, truly unstoppable infrastructure, and fostering core developers. So building the next generation of the developers that they will build this Web3. Now we will go through each one of these points. One thing, the first thing, um, application specific. If you think on a multi-chain future, there will not be 10,000 chains all general purpose. There will be 10,000 chains that will probably be good in doing a specific thing, right? So the solution here that Polkadot provides, that is also highlighted in the, in the schematic here, again, I recall the ring is the, the relay chain, then we have the parachains, and we just highlighted one parachain. The real thing that, uh, that Polkadot brings is that Polkadot is a sharded network. Sharded, what means is like it's parallelized. We have parachain, chain in parallel, and as long as this parallelization feature is really, is really powerful because as long as we have data in different locations, we can do different things with this data, right? But Polkadot goes a step further than that. These shards are not copy of the, of the, same, the same logic. We can have different logic for different shards, of different shards. So we have different parachain, like each shard is like uh, one of these highlighted things. They are also called parachains in Polkadot. Is a specific chain that is really tailored to do a specific thing. We can have DeFi. We still, we currently have different applications from DeFi, decentralized identity, uh, Internet of Things, social network, decentralized storage, prediction markets. These are st these are like parachain that today exist, and uh, and there will be more 
and the limit really here is like uh, the human mind of, uh, of creating this, uh, this application. But Polkadot also has a very flexi works on a very flexible virtual machine environment, which is uh, WASM. And uh, the core protocol is basically coded with uh, a safe, um, fast, and uh, really like robust language that is Rust. But we also have, we don't reinvent the wheel, right? I mean, the blockchain is here for a long, uh, since a long time. Uh, there is, was a lot ton of code out there uh, that is public and publicly available. We don't want to reinvent something. So what, we, what, what Polkadot uh, provides is also a Substar, uh, software development kit, an SDK called Substrate, which is a modular design. And people now can really build their own parachain, deploy it, attach it to Polkadot in a short time, which is weeks, or depending on the, on, on the, on the size of the parachain, of course, these things, uh, they vary. But of course, more easy to do than in the past. And uh, it allows people to concentrate on the use case, rather like reinventing the code and reinventing everything. Financial security, of course, in a multi-chain future, we cannot think that we will have 10,000 chain with uh, each one with a big security, right? Here, uh, proof of stake chain, we need uh, a, a big financial security in order to um, make sure that the chain cannot be like uh, altered. And here, Polkadot, what provides is share security. Here, I hi hi highlighted the um, the relay chain, this is the layer zero, this is Polkadot uh, relay chain. And uh, what it provides, it provides the financial security to all the parachains, all the shards that they attach to Polkadot. This is a really interesting concept, very elegant in my opinion, that provides chains that they are just um, starting to concentrate on the use case, rather like concentrating on, on securing the chain. Because concentrating on securing the chain, getting a funds and everything, this is a huge step that, uh, that basically um, doesn't allow you to concentrate on the real use and, uh, and, build your, uh, and build the business, build the parachains that you want. So share security is a big thing in a multi-chain future. Secure interoperability. This is also another thing that in the future will be a big, big problem. In, we cannot think that we will have 10,000 chain, that they will build, every, every chain will build bridges. Building bridges is a complex task. Bridges are by far the weakest point in a multi-chain environment. Most of the hacks happens on bridges. And we cannot uh, imagine that each parachain team will be able to uh, build secure bridges. So what uh, Polkadot provides is some tools that allow us to all the parachains, as I highlighted here in the, in the schematics, we can have two parachains that they open a channel and they transfer value. This can be easily done because of the relay chain that provides this thing. We have this XCMP that is a, a, a mess messaging passing protocol that allows to build the channels. And the XCM is a format that allows to send so specific messages between, uh, between parachain. And this, everything with security guarantees for these uh, interactions. But really, the, also another important thing is building an unstoppable infrastructure. And this is not uh, a matter of decentralization. A lot of times you see um, ecosystems that uh, they are proud that they have a lot of nodes that are decentralized. But decentralization is not really like uh, uh, a goal of an ecosystem. Decentralization is a tool. The goal is like building something that is truly unstoppable. That uh, if uh, government or like central authorities try to go and uh, you know, try to stop people, they cannot. It's too big, too difficult to stop. And what Polkadot have be, has been doing since the start is really putting in place an infrastructure that is truly unstoppable. And this is done not only by decentralizing, because, I mean, okay, Polkadot has 300 uh, active uh, nodes. You might think, okay, 300 is not a lot, but uh, there will be more. But I would say also, if we have like 10,000 
uh, one million nodes is also not so good, right? Because they have to come to a consensus and coming to a consensus with one million nodes is not that complex, uh, not, not difficult, uh, it's a complex task. And uh, we also talk about uh, energy um, efficiency. We don't want to have uh, so many nodes that they consume so much energy when they're not very useful. So there is a trade-off between uh, being too, de too decentralized and uh, not decentralized. We just want to adjust a little bit, but really here is also having something else in place, like a treasury that is possible to fund projects uh, without relying on a, a central entity because we have an on-chain governance that allows for that, right? So, yes, I mean, Polkadot, there is the Web3 Foundation, it's parity technologies, but really here is like the long-term vision of the project in 20, 30 years, 50 years from now, is that these entities will have a less and less role because, and even if uh, this entity will cease to exist, Polkadot will be able to continue because we have uh, this governance system, this treasury system in place, and it's possible to continue with the community because um, this is what was in the main like, idea at the beginning, is to really have something that's difficult to stop and has a long-term vision. And it's, not, it's not a sprinter, uh, we are running a marathon. So we are really like looking ahead because the vision of Web3 it's, uh, it's, it's, it's the future, so it, it needs time to implement and uh, to also be digested by, by, by the community. Then we have more core developers. Of course, if we multi-chain future has 10,000 chain, who's building this chain? We need people, right? We need good people, trained people that they know how to use these tools. So we have the Polkadot Blockchain Academy, the Substrate Builders Program, edX courses. Uh, coming soon, there will, be, there will be also Rust and Substrate courses that will train people how to use Rust, how to deploy a parachain, and uh, how to really like contribute on the development side. But Web3 is full of challenges. Polkadot is not perfect, and we still have a lot, a lot to do. Um, of course, the user experience, it's uh, not getting, it's not really like, um, it's getting there. I mean, it's improving, but it takes time. And uh, we also have uh, the education, very important. Education in Web3, we need to educate people about what is Web3, what is blockchain, um, why we are doing this. So it's really important, the education aspect of, uh, of it. And Web3 is still a centralized infrastructure. I, I showed these diagrams before and I told that it was not really the truth. The truth is like on the left. Most of Web3 nowadays is the left, it's Web 2.5. So it's basically a front end that is talking to a database, this RPC servers that is centralized and this RPC server is basically taking data from Polkadot or other chains, compiling this data and um, and basically, when you're using the product, you are really like um, fetching data from the database. And in theory, you can like manipulate the database and I can present to you whatever I want. And you have to trust the operator of this uh, database. So this is the web three now, is the left. We are working on the right side where we are actually um, not doing this but we are using this light client technology that I will not uh, really like dive into. It's not really uh, something of this, of this talk, but you can research about it. This light client technology allows us to really access and fetch data and verify that the data from the blockchain um, are, um, is, is the truth, right? So this is the long-term vision where all these decentralized apps will be um, will be like this, so where we can really actually verify that the data that we are fetching, that we are, that we are seeing, are, are actually what they are, and not, they, are not, they have not been tempered or like um, changed. And um, yes, I mean, this is the end. <laughs> yeah. if, you know, if you have any questions or, I don't know about time, is time good? The time is uh, okay. Well, we can some some questions. Yeah. 
Hello, Filippo. Uh, wonderful explanation. And you talk about different challenge in Polkadot, but in your personal opinion, what should be the the challenge that we can contribute in this moment to improve the network? If you have to select one in specific. Yeah, so, okay, I, I mean, centralized infrastructure is something that is done by developers and will take some time to implement and like really like make sure that we have a Web2 kind of user experience that is truly Web3 like this, not like that one, right? So this will take time, but I think the community uh, is very important to the ecosystem because the community is what will keep the ecosystem like alive in the future. Is building, you know, like this sense of uh, of um, really ownership because you are part of the ecosystem. You participate in governments. It's basically responsibility of the community to um, decide the fate of uh, of Polkadot or any other chain that has a decentralized organization, uh, decentralized autonomous uh, DAOs, right? But uh, really, I think here the challenge is education. You know, it's like onboarding people. It can be the, in the ambassador program, but also like when you talk uh, around, you give talks and you, um, you connect to people and people are curious about what you're doing, is really like uh, explain to them and especially being conscious that when you explain to them, they understand, right? So because these are complex things and we are often like discouraged, you know, like also it's important like sometimes to like take a break, uh, you know, like think about uh, how you're explaining as yes, people are understanding, you know, like uh, ambassadors, I'm talking about ambassador now, right, the ambassador program, um, is to really like edu educate and onboard people, make sure that you, you do, you know, you, you learn, you go up the ladder, but uh, you give your hand and you put, pull somebody up, you know, you help somebody to be Yes, yes, to be part of the ecosystem and being able that this person will be able to onboard new people and explain the concepts in, in, a, in a right way, you know, co correctly, because it's, it's a complex, uh, these are like a lot of concepts, right? But uh, it takes time to learn. And, um, but I think it's possible like to explain uh, this concept in, in an easy way, at least like try to do it, right? And if somebody doesn't understand, it's either reaching out to you, but make sure that people that are curious and you, you, you explain things, these people un un understand, right? They don't go away like maybe discouraged or, you know? Because it's the beginning, right? It's always like, it has been always like this at the beginning. You have a uh, few people, but you have tried to explain to the community and see which one is like um, curious on board them and everything. Yeah, I think education is the most most uh, important thing. If, I mean, for an educator uh, like me, like uh, the the ambassadors, is also like to to see the struggles of the people, and then you see the struggles, you like focus your attention in the things that really like, um, they're needed, right? Need the ex explanation. Yeah.